Back to back, back to yes. back. We never waste any time. Amazing 2-0 set from that previous set, but let's get into it. It's going to be Raflo versus Siski. How are you feeling about this matchup? Uh, I'm not going to pronounce myself here and, unless I have my lawyer with me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Going in with this, though, you have uh, some of that situation going down with between both these players where these two players are beasts. Monsters when it comes to keeping you by the ledge, making sure you have no way of coming back. So I feel like it's going to be very explosive. Yes, however, there's something we haven't talked about yet. Do you know who's the secondary of uh, Raflo? The, the what, sorry? The second character he plays. Dark Samus. Oh, that's right! Yes! And that's also why you can explain I had that in my the notes set too. count oh. right now between the mm -hmm. two, considering the feud last time they they faced each other at VCA, for example. Well, I have to remind you again, it went 3-1 for Raflo. So this is a game plan he knows well. He studied the way Siski plays in order to improve himself, for sure. And he played against him so many times already. Now, again, it's a BO3, so we've seen how Ramin was able to uh, out, uh, outset Glutony before. So. The surprise can happen, but Cisco needs to surprise us. And remember the last two, the last time specifically that these two players played, it was Raffle who won 3-1 and sending him all the way up, 141, almost catching with that explosive flame, even while he was charging the blast. And the pressure on ledge again, finding a good charge, okay, however, on the side of Cisco, resetting the situation. Look at the percent on both sides. You can know that both of them are going to <gasps> try oh, by the oh. kill. <laughs> and that side me, man, wanted to cover the side, the dash attack, but a tad too late. And well, he got killed by that down later on, 145%, however, he can still find the kill quickly. It looked like he matrixed the explosive flame by shimmishating his way past it with the dash attack to exactly. get closer and avoid that by closing in the gap. <laughs> we'll uh, have a replay on that action, please, with the 3 dm movement. That's the, that yeah, the way that he just closes the gap just to make sure that he can get the punish off of the explosive flame. You get the grab, you're getting yeah. the pummels in, but it's not going to be enough. 168, and this is Dark Samus at the end of the day. Yeah, again, and however, I love something on the side of Raffo. He's been doing votes on dragging up uh, oh, the wow. dragging nurse, sorry. Quite well. He tried to get a kill before with an opt, he didn't manage to do so. He had tried to get a kill with the back throw, didn't manage to do so. But finally finding a kill here before getting too much damage on. That's perfect. And you can see already that the, the, the situation has been resetted. Almost got the scoop up with the down tilt real quick. Oh, the tech isn't going to be in his favor. Taking that 57% off the blast. See the setup now on the ledge yeah. with the bomb. He's, He's gonna going to get forced off it. He's gonna, it's going to happen again. He jumps here. Doesn't get hit with the fair, though. So you see Siski actually putting in some respect roll distance from the ledge. Yes, again, Siski managing to respect all the options on the side of Rathlo. And he doesn't want to push his luck because he knows that whenever he does manage to find Rathlo on the ledge, he can just ramp up damage 30% here, 40% here. And you can look already at the numbers. It's already r bright red from the side of Rathlo. Trying to catch him with the scoop up and the dash attack. Down tilt coming in. That blaster, though, coming as well. Trying to get the follow up off of that bomb. Hit. The explosive flame now sending him up, almost ending that auto reticle, too. Siski stuck on the ledge, and this is the situation that we were talking about. How explosive these two players could get. Almost getting the ledge drop, but he was ready to catch him with the nair. Yes. Uh, we were talking before about the three players in Europe. You don't want to be in a ledge trap situation. And both two of them are right here. You don't want to be in a ledge trap situation against Siski because of all those damn bees, those charge shots, those fair to cover the jumps. But the same way, you don't want to be in the ledge trap situation against Palutena with that shield, those backers, those down tilt, that dash attack. Again, being invulnerable, taking the kill quickly and 120% he can manage to get into some to grab some damage here and there before dying so again BMS Raflo uh, still a good situation now. You saw the adjustment from there, right yeah. there too this time around actually going for the fair because Siski noted that he was jumping before he gets hit with the blaster though 165 no rage in the favor of Siski here so we are still living just barely though. Yes, just barely. If that's the word, because right now he's even at kill percent for a throw. Oh, An up throw can kill him now. A charge shot can do it. A down tilt can do it. All the hits from Siski. Even though a P out of shield can do it. See if he's even going to be able to have a chance to even get on the stage to be able to utilize that. Uh, oh, oh good as the eye, I think, it. on the side of Ruffalo here. Already on the last. Oh, come on! The win too, getting pushed a little bit off to the side. I mean, it was basically point blank on top of Paulu. Yes, and look at the damage again. He's getting pressured here to find a kill option, and Raflo is there to pick him up after every of those oh. options. This he was wow. perfect again. The more damage you got, and the less damage you spend, the less time you spend out of the ledge, the less invulnerable you are on the ledge. And he was there to punish him with that down tilt.
going afterwards with that back hair. It was perfect again by Palutena. Yep, that's that's the conversion right there by the ledge that we also saw Raflo try to go a few times with, but it's the fact that Raflo understands how quickly you have to make the change up. If the down tilt doesn't immediately connect, then he goes for the ledge jump immediately afterwards. If that doesn't work, he spaces himself away so that way he can get the explosive flame. He's so quick with his decision making. If one plan doesn't work, he already knows how to go through B all the way through D as quickly as possible. <sighs> that was a tense set game, sorry. That was not even a set first game. Oh my goodness. And you can feel that how and we have to remind you that both players are on the low side of the, bracket, the, 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 the wave right now. So a win here can be actually very important for the well, rest of their brackets. Uh, let's see how it goes for game two now. Again, remaining on those two characters here, Rafflop did manage to adapt a lot to what well, Siski were offering. And <laughs> Siski did succumb to pressure on the last part of the stock. So let's see how Hobo Bastion can help him. He really opened up by running into Siski just to dash attack. Yes. <laughs> He's going to send a message, ladies and gentlemen. You are in France. And that message was nearly finished with that down smash. However, timing wise, it was not perfect. However, it's a huge call out here. By Raflo. The way that Raflo plays Paulu, it looks like he has given Paulu a, a weapon to literally just cause mass destruction here. So I'm trying to go for a whiff grab real quick, and Siski making his way back gets a screw attack so that way he can go for a reset center stage. I want to add something. It does work this way when he's in a good mood or when he's in the game. Because you've seen already how it went against Ken, and this is something that can be fatal in this kind of, well, uh, tournament uh, organizations, I guess. Something similar, though, is he's not trying to overcommit with these near strings like we saw in his set with Ken. It's mostly trying to get much more of that damage and pressure yes. by the ledge situation. Again, going for a dash attack and punishing with a dash attack on his side. Trying to find a side B here. Look at the percent already. Next interaction, Siski can actually explode. But finding a good way to punish that F cheat is perfect because now he can try to ramp up a bit some damage here and there. And you can see that now Palutena is going to try to grab that kill quickly. So you can actually count on aggressive option on his side and punish them later on. But where would you go for it? Get up attack, hey man! <laughs> what was extra funny was that the Delta, it's a rollback knowing that Maybe Siski felt safe in that situation after seeing the whip on the down tilt, and he just got that grab, gets the yeet in the back throw, and now even stocks here, and you see the damage racking up. It's the elevator alley oop when it comes to Nairs coming in too, the spacing coming out as yeah. well. He's in the zone. Raffle is in the Raffle zone now. This is the BMS zone. You don't want to be in there, because if he's feeling in there, you're going to get out of here. 60% already, and you can see that the damage he was supposed to ramp up with those Nair and all have been set. So now he just need to find a few other conversions, okay. just as Siski did now to reset the situation. Off of that tech roll in too, but the reset now coming in from Raplo gets that Nair. Tries to find an opportunity. Didn't pull the trigger just yet on the up air, and I like that patience because he wanted to wait until he was as close to the ground as possible to make sure that that situation wasn't going to get swapped with that platform being right there. Woo! Ooh. Good timing here and good spacing, I guess. Well, but bad spacing on the side of Siski, I guess, to cover the roll in. But yeah, we've seen how Raflo was at ease when the opponent was above him, especially against Ken. And this is again a situation trend. Whenever Siski is just above him, he's there to punish him accordingly. And again, this is an even situation, but overall, the stage control is on the side of the French player. Raffalo looks so scary, going all the way deep with that Nair. Send Siski to the side in the explosive flame. Look at him dance on the platform with the platform cancels. He is feeling himself with this confidence, but he's at 98%. We've seen Siski claim these stocks relatively early here, and you're going to see him slow down a lot more. He's got the blast, but it doesn't even look like he has the space to be able to slow down. Yes, he doesn't manage to get enough time just to space the things out, to, time, oh no. to get the timing going for him. And you can see him jumping on his chair right now. He's getting pressured, and we've seen how it ended up during last game. So this is a pretty tense situation for the Spanish player. Is he going to get out? Oh, I'm not connecting the last hit. Samus is broken. <laughs> <laughs> not a good way. Gets that grab. 146. Somebody help him here. 171 and climbing. Still not enough. Yeah, not enough again. And taking time here with that shot shot. Going for the other one. Finally, but look at the damage done already. 80%. And you can see how Raffle just want to time things out a bit more. Chill a bit. Oh. Because, well, okay. Is this case really there? That was a little scary because he also jumped a little. Yeah, I was making a spike <laughs> or something going on here. 
Oh, he Good knew, sledge he again, knew. the same situation he was read for on the first part of the set against Ken. And the damage had been even down even more. Raflo uh. is in... Blacking is being behind compared to Siski here. Finally finding a good beginning of an advantage. He isn't going to get the stock because he, he needs to take the kill quickly. Because with him, how Siski was able to get back in that game quickly. With the respect right now, he tries to catch him with a back air, double back air. He's on that platform, tries to scoop him up with the down air. Not connecting twice, seriously! Again! Samus is broken now, slipping here on the cover, not dying yet, but 143%. Is it going to get back for no. Oh, no way, no way. Uh, come 145. On. I mean, you got the rage. That dash check was going to yeah. scoop up Raflo. You hear the crowd is going crazy. You would think we would have the audience here today. <laughs> this is literally a part of what you... Uh, this is only a fraction of the French power. Kind of the Iron Rage dependence, so maybe he didn't have a good option to cover that. Now, already in there with 26%, he didn't have uh, say his last word. Nair again, good Nair again, 54% already. And you can see again the stage control on his side, punishing here fair. You're not getting out of that ledge, my friend. Never mind. Uh, yeah, sorry, never say that. <laughs> <laughs> this is a whole reverse situation Especially now. with the way that these two players have gone back and forth. You see the platform cancel with the TP to immediately yes. microspace, get that follow-up, does get that grab here. The explosive flame as the insurance policy to allow uh, Raflo to actually make his way back. <laughs> Oh my goodness, again going for the explosive like and getting punished for it. This explosive flame in the end didn't get that much damage going for Palute for Raflo, considering all the damage he received in those situations up to now. <gasps> Covering the growl a rollout here, perfect again. Kating the stage control again, going for ledge trump, didn't manage to come oh. to, to connect. But that air dodge at the end was perfect. He did manage to avoid. What was that? The eye again! He got sent to the heavens right there. Palutena Ubering him right back over there. Gets that grab here, 104. We've seen this before, and Siski's so good at knowing when Raflo wants to go for these high recoveries. That time around, he knew he was gonna do it again, but missed space, that dash attack. Now you see the Nair strings coming in. You see the auto aggression there too, but you see yeah. that, that Raflo wasn't gonna go off stage. He's not gonna contest Siski there. Yeah, on each time, each time Raflo is trying to recover on the terrain, Siski is playing rock, paper, scissors. He's trying to cover an option. This time he was a good one again, but every time he was going for a TP cancel, he was going whether a jump, a battle, drift in, drift out. But for now, he did manage to connect a few here and there. And you can see again how the game even out between the two players. Gets that grab, doesn't connect with the dash attack though. Here comes the fair, the pace just this time around instead of auto attacking like we saw in that previous game. Try to cover the roll in, but did manage, not manage to get it. Did try to reset the situation. He's on the ledge though, and we've seen how both players are kind of at ease when the other player is in disadvantage in those situations. That get up attack, however, was not so, like planned at all <laughs> by Raflo, and he got reversed accordingly. You saw both players going for the spot dodge. One yeah. avoiding the grab, the other avoiding the dash attack. This time around point blank, you're gonna see that Raflo is able to get that grab. Waiting for the opportunity, doesn't get that down tilt. But connecting the nair afterwards and look at the damage again. Trying to get some air with that charge it was perfect for the side He did manage to get back on the terrain, but already on the other ledge now. You go, Ledge Invincibility wore out right there. Siski had to make his way back. That one hit of the Nair, though, could have spelled doom for him. Yeah, he wasn't expecting it just as before. He yeah. didn't think he would connect and he would have been able to go for an up smash or something. Uh, up sorry. But here again, damage evened out on both sides. Is he going to go for an option? No, try to oh, cover nice the jump. Oh, again, look at the mix-up on the side of Raflo here on the recovery. Raflo with, with the patience too by the ledge to also avoid the explosion from the bomb so that way he can safely make his way to that platform, avoiding that explosive flame at 137. Woo! We know exactly what Raflo wants. The back air is into the nair though. Is it going to connect? <laughs> it would have been... It would have spelled doom for both sides here. However, again, a drop of shield on the side of Siski is going to make Raffo able to connect that up pair. I'm just sorry. And here, the back air is not going to get the kill. So Siski needs to find another situation where he can stop the bleeding. Oh my goodness. Catching the good up, he can <laughs> here. And the good fair later on, resetting the situation. Again, the last stock situation for that set. What is that group? This is actually crazy. Catching them both times in the air like this. Both these players duking it out where they're predicting where each of them are going to be. Yeah. Siski's been really consistent in calling out Raflo's position, especially out of these teleports. See the fair coming in, then the Nair strings just in case Siski wants the to play defensively behind him. Try to hit as well! Trits hit something! 
Anyway, Sisko is really <laughs> confident on his reads. And you can see that because he's always covering an option. Finally, Raflo has something to say, but he just a mere down there, resecting again the whole situation. We think the grab here is going to be fatal. Oh. No, but gra grabbing some damage here, there again. Those are just skirmishes from both sides. We haven't seen a good advantage from both sides for the past minute. It's been just duking it out between both these yes. players. Back and forth, back and forth, except in this situation, Raflo did have the advantage keeping Siski by the ledge, but it's the immediate flip of the script like we've seen before. Immediately also uses that TP to get right past that platform. Catches him with a fair. The explosive flame lasting too long to allow that air dodge to allow Siski to escape. Again, he had the jump, so he was fine. But look at the damage again. This time, Raflo in the driver's seat, trying to go for it on edge guard again. Again, so again <gasps> finding a good back here. Here, there's still a jump, oh. I guess, on this. I trying to temporize everything. Yes, you need to, and you also need to find a good advantage here to get back in that game. Because for now, 100, already 100% 100 oh. ahead for the French player. Is he going to find a kill quickly before <gasps> Siskri does manage to get back in that game? Because for now, he was going to fish for those grabs, for those up smashes. Dash attack again, not going to connect. Back here again, quite stale. So not taking the kill. One stock for both sides. The it is going to take the kill. Raflo finally managing to get a win in that set. And you can hear the French crowd cheering for him. Finally, maybe there's a word where we will see a French in the top 12, ladies and gentlemen. And my voice is already awake. <laughs> I was going to say, the way that Raffle also kept Siski up in the air, juggling him like he is quite literally participating in the circus for like 30 seconds. I, I, I mean, I, even then, Siski still managed to reset on the ground, even though he was like a 140 plus. So that was still a scary situation. But the dynamic between both those players is another level. You could see the history. Looking back at these highlights, look at the way both these players were going back and forth. Not only quite literally duking it out, mano y mano, but it was the way that they were both able to catch them in the air that was so important because that spacing was what allowed them to get most of that damage done. Exactly. Compared to the few sets we had before, this time both players kept their patience, kept their nerves in that game. And the only thing that changed is that in the end, Siskri did a few more mistakes than Raflo and Raflo was there to punish them. So this is why it went that way, considering that overall, they were both in that up to the last moment, and you can see him finally getting caught here, getting baited by that back here on landing and thinking that he could get back on the terrain. The is going to, well, again, 